سلام 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam, and dear viewer, our topic for today is one of the most important topics that pertain to the belief of what is going to happen in the future. Our topic for today is about one sign of the hour. It's going to come inevitably, as we Muslims believe, as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us. The topic for today is about the Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Dajjal is a reality. It's not something figurative. It's not something symbolic. It is a reality. We've been told about it, alhamdulillah, in Islam. And we know that the things that will happen in the future, had we not been informed by Allah Azza wa Jal, and by his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we wouldn't have known about it. So the reference and the source from which we get this information is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the authentic Sunnah. Dijjal, what is Dijjal, first of all? Dijjal is an Arabic word. Etymologist, the scientists who are interested in tracing the root of words, they say. Dajjal is derived from the word Dajjala which means to move fast. The Arabs, they say, Dajjal rajulu That means when the man travels fast. So they say it is derived from this root. Others, they say, it is derived from the root Dajjala, which means to lie. And there's no contradictions. There's no contradiction here. Yes, he's Dajjal from the root Dajjala, that means travels fast. Because that's what the Dajjal will do. When he comes to earth, he travels so fast, so fast. The Prophet ﷺ described the fastness of his travel. He said, just like rain carried with a strong wind. So he travels so fast on earth. Yes, the Dajjal is derived from the root Dajjala, which means lie and deceive. Because he deceives the people, as we're going to know, inshallah. Also, they said Dajjal is derived from the root Dajjala, which means to make something look different from what it appears. For instance, to coat metal with gold. In reality, it's not gold, but it looks gold. So this is the linguistic or the lexical background about the root Dajjala. But the Dajjal himself is a human being, as we're going to know. Now the question, when the Dajjal will appear? Is that soon, later? Believe me, brothers and sisters, its time is getting closer. Because we are heading towards the end of time. We are heading towards the end of time more than any time before. So the Dajjal will appear when certain signs happen. The Dajjal, as I mentioned, is a reality. He lives in an island in the Arabian Sea. So he's a reality. The Prophet وسلم, when he was living in Medina, there was a man in Medina. His name is Ibn Sayyad. The Prophet وسلم, thought that he is the Dajjal, 
at his time. Because before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him that the Dijjal will not enter Mecca and Medina. And the hadith which is in Sahih Muslim, known as the hadith of the Jassasa, a group of people were riding the sea, the ship broke, they landed in an island, and they found the Dajjal. And he asked them, has this man, he means the Prophet Wasallam, has a prophet come to the Arabs? They said yes. He asked about the palm trees in Baisan, in Palestine. Do they still bear fruit? They said yes. So he said, when the palm trees stop bearing fruit, that's the time I will come out. The Prophet Wasallam, he warned the Sahaba, and this is now something Muslims, they have, you hardly hear now people talking about the Dajjal. Even in the khutbahs, may Allah forbid, if the Dajjal appears today, majority of people will follow the Dajjal, because they don't know what the Dajjal is. The Prophet Wasallam, he described the Dajjal, and he warned the Sahaba. The one of the companions tells us that one day, the Prophet Wasallam described the Dajjal to us, and he talked about the Dajjal and he, extensively, and he elaborated on that to the extent that when we left the Prophet Wasallam, we were expecting him to appear at any time. So the Prophet Wasallam warned us. So the Dajjal, when the Dajjal appears, as we mentioned, he travels so fast, he said he will appear and he will come out from this island, which is in Arabian Sea, and he will come between Syria and Iraq, and from that area he will come to us. And he's among the signs of the hour. There are many Dajjals, by the way, brothers and sisters, many Dajjals, not only one, but this is the greatest Dajjal. The greatest deceiver is this one. There are many Dajjals. The Prophet Sallallahu said, there were many Dajjals from among men. And he said, there are also four women. They will come after me. Everyone claimed that he is a prophet. But this greatest Dajjal, he will claim that he is God Almighty. So one Dajjal who claimed to be a prophet is Musaylama at the time of the Prophet Wasallam, and others, they came after him. And also women, Sayyah, etc. So there are many Dajjals, not only one, but the greatest Dajjal, the most dangerous one, is the Dajjal who lives in this island. The Dajjal, when he appears, there will be wars before his appearance, a lot of bloodshed, and Constantinople will be with the Muslims, though it is with the Muslims, but Allah knows what will happen. But the Muslims also will have it again. And then, while the Muslims are in Constantinople, sitting, relaxing, hanging their swords, by the way, hanging their swords on the, the olive trees, then they would hear a scream, and they would know, about the Dajjal, that the Dajjal now has appeared. So the Dajjal will appear at that time, after a great bloodshed. And that's why the, the Prophet ﷺ said, towards the end of time there will be calamities, there will be earthquakes, there will be a lot of bloodshed. Alhamdulillah, this is a glad news. This is a glad news for the Muslims. Because this deen, the deen of Islam, is going to reach every corner in the globe. And we are seeing it now. We are seeing it, that people are embracing Islam. So before even the time of the Dajjal, the Muslim, the Islam will, will reach every corner, including Rome itself, as the Prophet ﷺ told us. That Islam, Rome, the Muslims will have it. We'll have Rome, which is in Italy now. So Islam will reach every corner, and people will accept this guidance, and that is what Allah the Almighty decreed. The followers of the Dajjal, brothers and sisters, who will be following him? The Prophet Sallallahu said, 70,000 from among the Jews who are living nowadays in Asbahan, that is Iran today, they will be his followers. Not only the Jews and the Bedouin from among the Arabs. The Bedouin from among the Arabs, they will be also his followers. But the majority of his followers are the Jews. And that's what the, the Jal is. is the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, he claims that he's the true Messiah. The true Messiah is Jesus Christ. That's why we Muslims call it the false Messiah, the Dajjal. And the Jews will follow this uh, deceiver, this Dajjal, and many of the Arabs. 
because he performs miracles. So the fools from among the Arabs, they believe him and they follow him. That's what I, I am saying now, that Christ, peace and blessings be upon him. Isa salam, will come down. Isa will come down and he's the one who's going to kill the false messiah. Isa salam, as we Muslims believe, Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. We believe as Muslims that he's not killed, he's not crucified. He was taken into heaven and he will come back. He will come back when the Muslims are praying Fajr. And the Imam is the Mahdi alayhi salam. So when it is time for Fajr and the Muslims are straightening their lines and getting ready to lead the Salah, Isa alayhi salam will descend putting his two hands on the wings of two angels. And he prays the Fajr with the Muslims in Damascus, behind the Mahdi. And then after the Salah, they hear of the Dajjal. So Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, follows him and chases him, and he kills the Dajjal. So the one who's going to kill the Dajjal is Jesus Christ himself. Friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Old age home. Al Quran, Surah Al Isra, chapter number 17, verses number 23 and 24 says, The Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not a word of contempt. Do not say off to them, nor repel them but address them in terms of honor and out of kindness lower to them the wing of humility and say my lord bestow on them your mercy even as they cherished me in childhood there is no place for old age in islam peace tv the solution for humanity alhamdulillah this is a glad news this is a glad news for the Muslims. Because this deen, the deen of Islam, is going to reach every corner in the globe. And we are seeing it now. We are seeing it, that people are embracing Islam. So before even the time of the Dajjal, the Muslim, the Islam will, will reach every corner, including Rome itself, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, that Islam, Rome, the Muslims will have it. We'll have Rome, which is in Italy now. So Islam will reach every corner, and people will accept this guidance. And that is what Allah the Almighty decreed. The followers of the Dajjal, brothers and sisters, who will be following him? The Prophet ﷺ said, 70,000 from among the Jews who are living nowadays in Asbahan, that is Iran today, they will be his followers. Not only the Jews, and the Bedouin from among the Arabs. The Bedouin from among the Arabs, they will be also his followers. But the majority of his followers are the Jews. And that's what the, the Jal is, is the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, he claims that he's the true Messiah. The true Messiah is Jesus Christ. That's why we Muslims call it the false Messiah, the Dajjal. And the Jews will follow this uh, deceiver, this Dajjal, and many of the Arabs, because he performs miracles. So the fools from among the Arabs, they believe him and they follow him. That's what I, I am saying now, that Christ, peace and blessings be upon him. Isa salam, will come down. Isa will come down, and he's the one who's going to kill the false Messiah. Isa salam, as we Muslims believe, Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. We believe as Muslims that he's not killed, he's not crucified. He was taken into heaven and he will come back. He will come back when the Muslims are praying Fajr. And the Imam is the Mahdi alayhi salam. So when it is time for Fajr and the Muslims are straightening their lines and getting ready to lead the Salah, Isa alayhi salam will descend putting his two hands on the wings of two angels. And he prays the Fajr with the Muslims in Damascus, behind the Mahdi. And then after the Salah, they hear of the Dajjal. 
So Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, follows him and chases him, and he kills the Dajjal. So the one who's going to kill the Dajjal is Jesus Christ himself. The man we mentioned in the beginning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam thought that he was the Dajjal ibn Sayyad who was living in Medina before he was informed by Allah Azza wa Jal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the Dajjal will never enter Mecca and Medina. Umar ibn Khattab said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, if you think he is the Dajjal, let me kill the Dajjal. Let me kill him. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if he is the Dajjal, you are not the one to kill him. The one who is going to kill him is Isa alayhi salam, not you. So who's going to kill the Dajjal, the first Messiah, the Antichrist, is Christ himself, Jesus himself, Isa alayhi salam. And he will kill him where? In Lud. Lud is in Palestine now. The Lud is in Palestine. And he will kill the Dajjal with the spear. And he will come and show the blood on the spear and say, this is the blood of the false Messiah. The Dajjal, alhamdulillah, this deen, Islam, tells us everything. The Prophet ﷺ, he described the Dajjal and give us all the details so that we will not be confused. Is he the Dajjal or not? You know, some today, subhanAllah, you'll come that some Muslim, they say, you know the Dajjal, it's not something reality. You know, television is the Dajjal, subhanAllah. The television is the Dajjal. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, it is written on his forehead. Is it written now on the screen? Kafir, disbeliever? No. He's blind. They say, you know, the screen, you know, it is one hole. Huh? He's blind. No. The Dijal is a human being. The Dijal is a human being. The Prophet ﷺ said, he is blind. Some narrations, both in Muslim, I think, they it says one is the right hand, I, the other one is said the left hand. And there is no contradiction as Hafiz ibn Hajar explained. So the Dajjal is blind, number one. It is written on his forehead, written on the forehead of the Dajjal, Kafir. Every Muslim will be able to read it, whether he is literate or illiterate. He will be able to read the, uh, this word, Kafir. And he is blind. And one of his eyes is having a thick skin on it. And the other one is protruding. The other eye protrudes like a, a piece of grape. And his hair is, you know, not soft hair, etc. So these are the physical descriptions of the Dajjal. He is not tall, he's short, and his complexion is darkest, and also his movement. His movement is awkward when he moves. There will be a lot of bloodshed prior to the appearance of the Dajjal. And there will be a great fight between Muslims and the Romans before the Dajjal. The Dajjal tries to enter Mecca and Medina. But Alhamdulillah, Allah protects Mecca and Medina with angels. He tries to enter Mecca and Medina, but the angels stop him. Then the Medina will shake. And all the Munafiks in Medina will come out and follow him. And follow the Dajjal. The Munafiks will come out and follow the Dajjal. And a young man will come out from Medina. He will come out and meet the Dajjal. And he will say to the Dajjal, you are the Dajjal that our Prophet Sallallahu already told us about you. The Dajjal will kill him and cut him into two halves. And then he, the Dajjal will say to the people, what do you think if I bring this man back into life? Will you believe that I am your Lord? They will say yes. So he brings the man back into life. Then he tries to kill the boy again. When he brings the man into life again, this Muslim will say, now I am 100% sure that you are the Dajjal. He tries to kill him again, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this man. This is one of the best martyrs as we've been told. Isa alayhi salam will descend towards the end of time, and he will find the Muslims in the Salah, and he's the one who is, kill, is going to kill the Christ, the Antichrist or the false Messiah. So Isa, we Muslims believe, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, as وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا And no one from among the people of the book that would not accept Jesus Christ. So this prophecy in the Quran has not been fulfilled because the Jews, they did not accept Jesus Christ. And the Quran is saying all the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, will accept him. 
and that will happen only when he comes again because he will not accept when Jesus comes again will not accept anything from any human being from especially Jews and Christians he will not accept from them anything except Islam he will accept only Islam if they refuse he kills them Jesus Christ kills them so when he comes back he's the one who's going to kill the false Messiah there are many signs earthquakes and a lot of bloodshed famine drought all these things will uh, precede the appearance of the Dajjal. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he brings along with him heaven and hell. So what appears to be heaven, appears to be like the Jannah, that is his hell. And what appears to be like his hell, that is the Jannah. So he deceives the people. He's going to stay on earth for 40 days. And when the Prophet ﷺ asked, and he said one day will be equal to one year, one day equal to one month, one day equal to one week. So the Sahaba, see now brothers and sisters, the, the, what the Sahaba were thinking of. They were only thinking of the Salah. They said the day which is equal to one year. Five prayers enough, O Prophet of Allah? Five day prayers enough? He said, no, try to approximate. So the, not five prayers enough for this day which is equal to one year. Because the day will be very long. So you try to approximate the number of prayers for that day. So one day equal one year, one day equal one month, one week, and then rest are equal like our days. Isa alayhi salam, because uh, some people might uh, raise this question. If Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet, and now you are telling us Christ will come again, so Christ is the last prophet. That is not true. Because who told us Christ is coming is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He is the one who told us he's going to come back. And when he comes back, that's why he will pray behind the Mahdi. And the scholar, they said, the wisdom behind that is to tell us that he is not going to come with a new law that will abrogate the law of Islam. He will follow what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. He will follow the religion of Islam. And he prays behind the Imam of Muslims, the Mahdi. And he will rule accord with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will rule with the Quran and Sunnah, and he will follow the Quran and Sunnah. And then after that, Isa alayhi salam, after killing the, uh, the false messiah, when we know that Gog and Magog will come, killing the people, then Allah Azza wa Jal will inform Isa alayhi salam that you and the Muslims with you, you cannot fight them. And then they come and they spread corruption and make mischief on earth, Gog and Magog. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends worms, they eat the Gog and Magog in their necks and they die. And the Muslims then come down and rain will come down and wash the, clean the earth. After that, Isa alayhi salam will go to Mecca and perform Hajj and Umrah. And after that, he's going to die. So now, brothers and sisters, the Dajjal is a reality. And he's a human being. And he will not have children. And he's blind. And it is written in his forehead that he is disbeliever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this sign. If he is God, why it is written in his forehead he is a disbeliever and he is blind? He should first of all remove that effect. So this is a vivid sign, a refutable sign, material sign. Everyone sees it. So he is a human being and he is going to come and he is now locked and chained in an island in the Arabian Sea and he will come out between Syria and Iraq and 70,000 of the Jews who are living now in Iran will follow him and the ignorant from among the Arabs will follow him and Jesus Christ is the one who is going to kill him and he's going to kill him with the spear and he's going to kill him in Palestine in the Lud where now you can international airport in Palestine is so this is the Dajjal may Allah Azza wa Jal preserve all of you brothers and sisters from the calamity and from the affliction and the trial of the Dajjal and how to avoid his fitna how to avoid the Dajjal the Prophet Sallallahu gave us the remedy how to avoid it how to protect yourself he said whoever reads the first 10 ayah of surah al-baqarah or the last 10 ayah of surah al-kahf who reads the first 10 ayah of surah al-kahf or the last 10 ayah he will be protected from the dajjal may allah protect all of us may allah save all of us barakallahu feekum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh